Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Josh Herman. Welcome to Art Jam Season 3, Episode 1. It is crazy. We've almost been doing this like uh, for three, this is three years that we're starting our third year of streaming. Uh, very happy to be back for hopefully everybody had, a, everybody had a great new year. Happy holidays. Hopefully everybody is safe and healthy and happy. Um, Welcome to Art Jam. Today we're going to be making a bunch of stuff on stream. I'm going to be sculpting in ZBrush today. My goal today is to kind of make, take a head and get it into Marmoset and get it as finished and as final as fast as I possibly can. Uh, in case you don't know who I am or why I'm even up here, I'm going to share my screen very, very quickly and give you a quick introduction. I see Atik is here. I see some returning people. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year to you. Uh, my name's Josh Herman. Uh, I've worked, I'm a graduate of Noman. I graduated back in, in 2009. And uh, I've been working in the industry for a little over a decade on a bunch of uh, things. You're more than welcome to check out my Instagram here. You're more than welcome to check out my art station. Uh, but just to give you a quick piloting through this, I've worked on uh, box office blockbusters like Endgame and a bunch of Marvel movies. Worked on Uncharted series. I uh, worked in games. Worked on Star Citizen. Uh, worked, been able to con contribute and work on many uh, big projects. Uh, as both a character artist, a character modeler, a sculptor, a digital sculptor, and a concept artist, character designer, art director, creative director. So if you have any questions while I'm working today, uh, whether that's about individual process or whether that's about um, my career or questions about your career, Noman stuff, getting getting started in school, getting started in stuff, please ask. That's, that's all the reason I'm actually saying this is welcome and if you've got any questions please ask we're here to help and i'm here to do as much uh for you as i can so let's get into it uh question from daniel hollingsworth any tutorials coming josh you love the Noman Masterclass. uh nothing that i'm working on at the moment uh but to be honest uh if you want to see me work you're in the right spot you can also check out the stream that i do on tuesday mornings from 10 to noon pacific time which is called archetype check that one out i actually just finished my first uh, character. I'll be working on 12 characters throughout the year. So this is the first one that I just finished, which is called The Creator. Uh, so you can feel free to check that out on ArtStation or Instagram. Uh, and you'll get to see those a little bit more in depth. But I finished basically the bulk of this character on stream. So if you want to watch more tutorials, there's probably 10 hours of me working on this character uh, there. And those are on our YouTube page and those are on our Twitch page. So feel free to check those out. Uh, but yeah, Plenty of stuff available if you want to watch some stuff there. So hopefully that helps you, Daniel. Uh, anyways, like I was saying, we're going to get started today. Uh, I'm going to get into ZBrush, and we're going to go ahead and start sculpting in just a minute. Uh, I'm, I am going to do a different process than I've done before. Uh, if you've watched any of the Art Jam streams or even Archetype streams, you'll know that I've sculpted many, many a character on many different types of ways. Um, but this time... Uh, I'm going to use a base mesh, and this time I'm actually going to use a base mesh from 3D Scan Store. And the reason I'm going to use the, the base mesh from 3D Scan Store is so that I can use all of their amazing, very high-res texture maps, which are like 16K texture maps. Uh, that will make it so that I can easily add really, really fine level detail from multiple different textures, and I can also use the base of their texture maps for my texture map. Uh, that's a lot of textures that I just said, but uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm also going to change the layout here. I, I've already done the introductions down here, so you kind of know who I am and where we are. Uh, so I'm just going to remove this so you can actually see me and we'll get going. Uh, welcome to the stream, everybody, and Happy New Year. Uh, Simon from YouTube, hello. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. And let's get started. Uh, I'm going to kind of just get into it. Uh, this is a pretty nice base mesh. Uh, the nice thing about using something like this is it's pretty well organized, and I'm going to kind of do something somewhat fantasy today. And again, my goal of, is to get this into um, Marmoset. Uh, it's 3D Scan Store. If you purchase any of their scans, you actually get Marmoset scenes, and I actually use my an archetype. The other stream I was mentioning, I uh, did my final renders in Marmoset. Uh, so what my plan is, is to get this over to Marmoset, use the existing scenes, re-import my model, and then add or adjust the textures there um, to make this a little bit faster of a process. Uh, if you're in production or you're doing anything like that, working in a production, there's no such thing as cheating, unless you're straight up stealing somebody's work, but this is something you can obviously purchase and use. 
so there's no stealing uh, there, and it's totally fine to do. Uh, question before anybody asks it, you probably shouldn't uh, you know, claim to make it as your entirely your own work, especially if that's the job that you want to uh, be doing, but it isn't as meaning. Uh, don't say you can sculpt it and do it all from scratch if you can't, right? But if you can, and you know you can, and you're in a crunch environment or trying to do something fast, um, why not? Why not use a base mesh is the question I would ask. Uh, question from Daniel, do I still use Keyshot at all? I do, and I actually used it on some recent projects. Uh, but I have been switching over to other things. Uh, Keyshot for me is just starting to wear out its welcome, for lack of a better term. I feel like I'm hitting the peak of what I feel like I can really do in Keyshot, if that makes sense. I'm just going to clean up this polygroup as we get started. Um, Marmoset also recently added ray tracing, so there's not a lot of downside to using it. And they have some pretty great uh, preset materials, and you can also do um, a little bit of texturing in there. So what they've done is pretty cool. All right, the reason I, I did that is so that I can quickly mask this. Realizing that's not exactly the same, is it? I think my uh, symmetry was not on. So uh, let's go display properties, double. There we go, we see the inside of that. I'm just gonna, from with no perspective on, hide all this side. There we go. Don't really need to see inside the head. Doesn't hurt though. So we'll keep it like this mask that that way I can have a nice mask on the ear so if I want to do anything different with it I can give it a little tug and it'll be fine all right I'm kind of feeling something playing with the base mesh, stretching out some of the features here. All of it, uh, pretty quickly I'm going to add in eyes. And what I'm mostly trying to do is kind of just break away from the existing base mesh uh, subtly. Uh, since it is nice uh, topology, I don't really want to crank it like you would in, in ZBrush you know, normally. You're like pulling stuff all over the place and dynameshing. I want to keep it pretty uh, subtle with what I'm going to do here. Somewhat realistic. It's still fine to do, you know, stylized planes and stuff like that with, with realistic detail. Obviously, if you watch stylized movies or anything like that, even I recently have been watching Encanto, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, but you'll notice that the, you know, the characters there have a realistic skin textures and stuff like that. It's still totally fine to do that. I think I want to do something with a little bit bigger of cheekbones. Something that's got kind of a gesture going down and into the face. So I'm just going to start smoothing that out. But again, the great thing about this is that it has nice topology. So I can pretty easily uh, go in here and isolate this stuff. Like this has a mouth bag. I don't really need that. At least not at the moment. So I'm catching those loops. What I'm trying to do here is just get a nice line for the chin and the jaw. Uh, and this is going to make it so it's a lot easier to adjust anything on the bottom if I might want to. So I'm just hitting Control W. I accidentally hit Control S, which popped my save menu to the other side. There we go. Control W will quickly make a polygroup for you. 
So now I have show everything polygroups for the ears, the mouth, and the mouth bag. I'm starting to get now as well. So I'm going to invert that, make that a polygroup, hide that, make that a polygroup. That way I have the mouth on the inside. I'll be able to adjust that later. I will be adding eyes and teeth to this. So um, we'll get to that in a minute. Thinking, I've been really, you know, enjoying like things like uh, Mad Max and stuff like that that would have a little bit of uh, face paint or something like that. So I kind of want to get into that a little bit and see how this goes. Maybe a little elfin uh, characteristics to this character. Uh, what do I think about? Max on acquiring ZBrush recently. Uh, that was a big topic right before the, the holiday break. Took we all, uh, several of us at Nomen took a couple weeks off for the holidays and the new year. Um, I'm curious to see how it plays out. I'm personally happy for them. Uh, that they're hopefully they're getting everything wanted out. They wanted out of the uh, acquisition. And it's hard to say too much aside from that. Try enlarging these eyes just a little bit. Is this a ready-made head? Um, it is. It's a base mesh. Yes, I'll be working with this base mesh. And just working from that. It's available from 3D Scan Store. It's free, so you can grab it right now. I did it just before the stream. Are you using any references for this character? Not at the moment. Uh, I have a kind of a picture in my head of what I want and what my kind of goals are. And it's kind of to make a somewhat delicate elf style character uh, that I'm going to use. It's kind of more of a test to explore um, the 3D scan store workflow using their base meshes. Definitely no insider stuff. <laughs> I don't know if it's super insider stuff. A little bit more weight. Kind of feeling like this music a little too chill for today. And something that's gonna help me work. We're gonna have to switch to something a little heavier. Alright, let's switch. Let's do Synthwave, I think, is one that I've liked. Let me know, everybody, if the music is too loud, or if the music is too quiet as I get this set up. Uh, Yule Adams from YouTube is asking, is no one working with any indie studios or individual projects of note, or mostly many streams? We're working on a lot of streams. We have some cool stuff coming up so I definitely check that out I mean be announcing some new stuff soon Huppings from Twitch hey Josh currently taking an anatomy course by Scott Eaton nice job that's an amazing course I took it several years ago and he'd like to know how important I think memorizing bone slash muscle names is my opinion on that is it's not important uh, I think it's important to know the shapes the locations and generally what they are and if if learning the names themselves helps you do that then by all means do that uh, i'm not saying it's it's like uh it's i'm not saying it's stupid to do that but um my, the way that i learn isn't um i don't learn by reading a book and i don't learn by memor memorizing names um for me it's more visual so i didn't i haven't gotten a ton of success from that but I also don't know anatomy like Scott Eaton does or you know, many other artists do so uh, I might be the wrong person to ask there but that, that's at least my opinion so, 
How's the sound? Is it a little loud? Is it a little quiet? Yeah, no worries on the tip. Again, it's my opinion. So if it's uh, something that works, maybe a tad loud. All right, thank you. Again, like I was saying, it's my uh, per perspective on that. I just find that for me, learning all the names wasn't as helpful. But for some people, they know that they swear by it. Like that's how they, that's how they learned them. Cross, going to subtool master, mirror, merge into one subtool. There we go. Go ahead and start saving this. Last question before you sadly have to go. What do you suggest you study after anatomy to be a character, artist, figure, sculptor? I uh, hope you're not bothering me. Absolutely not. I'm here for a reason. Um, well, you can always learn anatomy. So don't, I guess the thing is like, don't feel like you'll ever be a master in it. Because even when you feel like you are, you're always still learning. You, know, you can look at Scott Eaton as a way of somebody who's still doing exactly that. Um... I guess I would say clothing. Like if you want to be a character artist, you need to start learning the anatomy of how clothes work. Uh, so how do wrinkles work? How, do clo how does clothing work? You know, that's all pretty important stuff regarding, you know, uh, that part of the job if that's what you're interested in. So get better at studying clothes and fashion and how certain things, why certain things do things and. You know, that's the next that's the next step you know you'll, you'll you'll get books like that like all of a sudden you'll be interested in in um, you know finding about how somebody makes a thing or how people wore certain clothes and I'm trying to find an art book right now that I seemingly can't find but because it's hidden under several other ones but you know how the history of making ah here we go clothes that I would recommend or books I'd recommend like that are going to be stuff like, you know, historic costumes and how to make them or the history of underclothes. This is like, you know, different types of things. And this book will have, um, you know, examples of things. It might even have examples of patterns, like a pattern of how a Saxon's man long tunic or robe was created. Right. So this kind of stuff is if you want to get into doing clothing and the understanding of clothing and um, how to make those clothes, and especially if you want to get into Marvelous Designer or doing that stuff in uh, ZBrush, you're more, it's an easy way to get into it, but having an understanding of the foundation of, of uh, making clothes, that would probably be a big step for you. Do you have any recommendations of 3D assets to include in a Nomen applicant portfolio? Good question, Pante. Um, not necessarily 3D. I mean, I think, you know, the 3D stuff that we see come in for applicants for applicants uh, is pretty varied. It's, it's mostly gonna depend on the, the individual's uh, interest, right? So if you're somebody who's interested in effects or animation or modeling or texturing or sculpting or concept, uh, it kind of varies and it, I've seen uh, portfolios with all of those. So I would say uh, pick things that you like working on. And if you, hopefully if you like them, you'll spend time in making them look good. And if they look good, and your portfolio looks nice, um, it'll be easier to get accepted. It's 
So something I really like about working with a, a good base mesh um, is the poly loops. See how there's a loop that kind of goes all the way around? It's really great to be able to do this because you can focus on just manipulating, ooh, manipulating the geometry. I was able to create a really harsh crease here, a really great plane there, because the base mesh created that. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Noman. Uh, we have a moderator here, so whoever that is, thank you. Um, also part of our applications is that the advisors will coach you for free. Uh, our application process is very, very different than the average college. So if you're somebody who's interested in that stuff, um, or, or becoming a student, uh, the biggest piece of advice I can actually give you is to start talking to a advisor now uh, because it's free, first off. You have to do it to get into the school anyways, and they're going to give you the best advice possible to get your application approved. Um, I did it when I went to, to school here at Noman, when I graduated from Noman. Um, I think I submitted my portfolio once, I you know, three or so months in advance. Uh, they gave me some things that they recommended that I work on, uh, along with resources, and then I followed that. I did what they asked, and uh, I got in. So I think it's just kind of one of those things of, you know, just got to push forward with it. Looks like in the chat there was just a contact card that was posted. In case you haven't uh, gotten in touch yet, you can use that directly to get in touch. Thank you, moderators. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> well, welcome, Eggman Burke from Twitch, from Turkey. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, note that you can also watch all all of our streams afterwards if it doesn't work for your time zone. If you're later early wherever you're at uh, on our twitch or youtube channels so feel free to do that That's why. That's the idea for the head. This is going to be kind of like an elf, and I want to mostly experiment with the 3D scan store HD displacement textures. So right now I'm just kind of blocking out. This is their base mesh. I am blocking out some primary forms. And we'll see how this goes. The nice thing about this is all of their textures are put on the same base mesh for both males and females. So I can start getting this in uh, sooner, I think, probably than I expected. Uh, I'm gonna make some adjustments to the nose shape. And then I'm gonna start getting into the next level of detail. Do I, do I prefer Multiple monitors or single monitors, uh, it depends actually. Generally, I'd say uh, multiple, uh, you know, especially if it's a work setup or something where you know, you're gonna be doing a lot of different types of projects. Uh, however, I will say that sometimes uh, multiple monitors can 
by the nature of basically being able to have, you know, a stream or a podcast or a show or something on the other screen, make it a little uh, easy to get distracted, right? And so if I'm, I've, I have intentionally removed a, a second and third monitors from my setup before if I don't want to get distracted. Uh, so that, that may be something that could work for you. I used to work on a single, a one large single monitor station for a very long time, probably three to five years. Uh, and that was probably, probably my most productive point in time. It's just so easy to pop Netflix or Facebook or Instagram or something like that on the right side left side, depending on what you prefer. I'm on a two monitor setup right now and I'm using uh, the left monitor. Have I used the space mouse? I've never used it. Never used the space mouse. All right, let's just add some subdivision levels to this now. So about 200,000 points now. Uh, I'm mostly just gonna slowly level this up and start adding details. Furious is here. Um, and I will get those displacements in pretty quickly. And you'll see why in a moment. Smoothing it uh, lost a little bit of that shape. So I'm having to kind of come in, you know, sculpt some of this to be a little bit more uh, intentional than it was. But that's all right. Do you use the standard brush or clay brush when you're sculpting on your mesh? I use a little bit of everything. Uh, I use the clay brush and the standard brush and the dam standard and the inflate brush and the clay buildup brush. Uh, I kind of use a little bit of everything, but I only use about four to five, eh, realistically six brushes. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six on my keyboard. Um, you know. Set up as hotkeys for those individual brushes. Thirty minutes in, and this is how far I got. I will, I will be honest with you. I wish I could say that's this is how far I got from scratch, but I, I am using a base mesh this time. So I've been altering the base mesh. So it's not like I sculpted this from a sphere. Uh, since I knew I just wanted to do a humanoid one, and I'm also going to do some stuff with UVs this time and some displacements, which. Thank you for telling me it's 30 minutes in because that means I need to get moving. Can't dawdle for too much longer. Okay. Trying to be more subtle on this one than some other ones I've done before. We all do use a base. Many of us do. See? Right, I'm going to save this really quickly. I'm going to import those textures. 
Uh, basically what you gotta do, you can load the Z tools, which they can have it, but uh, you can also go into, I'm gonna load a, a couple of them. So you can go into alpha, import, I'll load them up over here. Uh, so we'll get our asset library, three scan store heads. So you see a bunch of the heads that I have here. Each one of these will have its own displacement textures. Each one of these textures, because this mesh has the same UVs, mean that they will all work. So I have basically 12 different options for displacement textures that I can use. We'll start with one of the, I'm gonna go through a couple of them, but we'll do the female displacement one. I'll load it up, you'll see it'll import here. I'm loading it as an alpha because it's a black and white image. You note that it's on the left up here, it says it's a 16K texture, so it's pretty big and it's 16-bit depth, so it's got a lot of information in it. Uh, I'm gonna have to flip it, and I'm just gonna load a couple more. The reason I'm not gonna load a ton of them is when I just hit flip, you'll notice it took a couple seconds to do that. That means that it's a big file. I just checked on my other monitor. Each one of these files is 500 megabytes, so I don't wanna load in a ton of these displacement textures all at once because it could crash my program meaning I don't want to load 10 gigs, 12 gigs of displacement, displacement textures. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead in here, I'm gonna make a texture map, I'm just gonna create one, just from Polypaint, it's blank. And then I'm gonna go into my displacement, I'm gonna select here now, because I've imported these, you'll see I have two different options. I'll click one, and I have displacement on. It's on, but nothing's happening. And that is because the intensity is at zero. I'm also gonna add probably two more levels of detail. So the mesh itself is at three million polygons. And I'm gonna just turn the intensity to one. You're gonna see that this is gonna immediately break the mesh. Beautiful. Now it means that it's on, right? Notice it's not actually breaking the surface. It's cause it's still a texture. So I would have to hit apply to the map to see what it actually looks like. I can tell with the preview here that this is not at all what I want it to look like, but you can see how it's starting to work. The recommended settings from what I've seen is around 0 0.003. So now when I get very close, you can see the fine pore level detail that this uh, texture, this displacement texture is bringing uh, to it. And especially on the lips and stuff like that. We could push it up to maybe 0 0.006, push a little bit further. And we'll get some really nice, great detail on this mesh. Now what I can do, and this is a way to uh, save it, or if you wanna have all of these, it can make your file a little bit bigger. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this by going into my layers, creating a layer, and I'm gonna apply this to my displacement map. Uh, it actually came out to be a little higher than I expected, but what should happen is now if I turn off this layer, you'll see, I basically have this displacement map, I'll turn it actually off, I'll remove it entirely. But it's still here because I now have it as a layer. The cool thing about this is now I can dial the intensity of the layer itself up and the layer itself down. So if even I went, though I went a little heavy, I can take the layer here and I can say 0.5 and that will push it back. Probably roughly to where the 0.3 was gonna be. Right, so I'll hit one and I'll turn this layer off and we'll say this was named female 01. And that way I know what that was. I'm gonna come in here now and I'm going to try a different one. So this was female 01. This one with the little wrinkles on it looks like it's gonna be male 01. I'm gonna turn that on. Now you're gonna see this one has different wrinkles because it's a different person. This is from a different scan, right? So I don't know if this is necessarily what I want in my texture, but it is different. So the nice thing is we can go through and we'll say alpha import. Well, before I get crazy with this, let me just come back and say, uh, I'm gonna turn off. I know I don't want this one, so I'm gonna cycle through and try them, basically all. Turn this off. The reason I'm turning this off is because when I save the tool, it can save all of the textures that are associated with it. So I don't wanna necessarily save any displacement maps here. That's also going to make sure that it's saved. And I'm going to go into Alpha, Import, and go back into where we were. Uh, Asset Library, Scan, Store, Heads. You can't see this, but we're going to choose our uh, Mail02. I'm just going to go through and just import a bunch of these. 
So it does take a little while to get them in here. Alpha, flip. Import. Let's get our, uh, let's get a male of three. I like the subtle one that we have of the female of one. So I'm probably gonna stick with that for a little while. But I wanna see if any of these have interesting things because the next thing I can do is I can morph in or dial in parts of that texture if I really want it. All right, so we have two more here we can play with. I know we used this one, I think. This one looks interesting. So this one seems more subtle. So we'll click this. Yeah, this is kind of like a more of a bumpy texture to it. So I'm going to turn a layer on. And then I'm going to turn the displacement off. Hmm. Apply the map. So, and then I'm going to turn this. Uh, we'll name it. I think it was Melo 2. I don't actually know, but we'll say that's what it was. We'll turn it off. Turn this to a new one. This one looked like it had a bunch of cool stuff on it. Also another kind of a bumpy one. Let's do... Another import though. That one doesn't feel like it's different enough. I'm gonna come in here, heads, nail of four. Let's see what we get with this. Turn this off. This one looks like it has a ton of wrinkles. So let's flip it. Much faster than manually using DIY alphas, absolutely. First off, it's faster. Also, the detail is going to be way higher, unless you're doing this like individual, uh, you know, one by one. Right? Okay, this one's definitely got a lot more to it. So we'll keep this one. For, I don't know if we'll use it, but it could be a nice thing to have. So I'm going to again make another layer. I'm going to apply the displacement map. That's a lot more detail than the other ones have. I'm going to name the layer. I think this was male of four. Turn the layer off. Switch it to something different. Let's go back to this one. I want to apply this one anyways. Apply. Kind of a nice, more rough texture. And this, I think this was Mailer 3. I'm just keeping these named as the files were named so that I know what they were. Turn it off. I can kill this. All right, and now I can start sculpting on all this stuff. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use some of these layers. I'm gonna go ahead and save the model. Uh, notice it was 59,000. Let's see what it's at now after it saves. 141, so notice that the layers that I saved, even though they're not necessarily visible, the information uh, that you store in a layer is calculating or being added to your file size. So you're just gonna be aware of that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, that took 10 minutes. That took, I mean, honestly, think about it. That took 10 minutes to get a pretty high level of detail or potential level of detail on the mesh. Now, the nice thing about this, in case you're not, never use ZBrush or you don't really know how this works, I can come down to my lowest subdivision level. I can't turn these layers on at this point. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if I move and stretch the mesh, go back up to a high level of subdivision, and then turn this back on, See that all that detail, even though the mesh looks ridiculous, is still there. Undo, 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 undo. And now we have that. You can also have this on while I sculpt. But visible doesn't necessarily mean that I'm able to sculpt. But the problem that I, this is an issue with layers in general, or one of my issues with layers, is that. I now cannot sculpt unless a layer is being recorded. That's what this little button to the left of this is. So all I need to do is create a new layer. That will be the one that I want. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of looking around 
at these and seeing if there's anything that I want to use. This one's way too strong. Yeah, that's way too strong. You can also bring on multiples at once. of them. And what I like about this one that I turned down is that it has some of these wrinkles built in. So I'm going to use these as a base to start to kind of mark out where this is going. Uh, so I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this my sculpting layer. And even though this is a little high, I'm going to turn this up. Turn that off. Turn this down just a little bit over to here. Go back to this sculpting layer and hit record. Now I can sculpt. I can go down in subdivisions and I can go up in subdivisions. It's uh, not symmetrical, so that's important to note, but I can basically use these as a guide. So let's say I wanted to enhance one of these lines. Enhance. I can do that. I don't really have enough detail here in my model right now to justify this. So I need to kind of push it a little more in general, but I have a really great roadmap of where I need to go. So I'm going to just push this with a normal standard brush before I go too much further. Good evening. Good evening from Twitch. Hello, hope you're doing well. Welcome to the stream. You want to give this character like maybe a little more attitude. Do I happen to do commission work? Um I've never done commission work, so probably not. I don't know. Never tried. So the cool thing about layers again, so this is the sculpting layer. Basically all my changes and all my adjustments that I'm doing are being added just to this layer. This is a really great thing if you're working production. Or if you just want to not kind of commit to a change, probably one of the best ways to be non-destructive with your models. If you don't know what non-destructive means, it's pretty straightforward. It essentially means you're not baking anything, you're not making anything into your, your model that you can't undo. Looks like there's a little bit of a line that kind of goes here. Because the mesh that I was working on didn't really have uh, enough information on it to have details like I'm sculpting in, I'm using the um, displacement map basically as a guide for, for how the, the sculpt could go. For where some of these forms could be driven from. I'm not sure I love that shape though. Feels a little forced. Let's just push the sculpt 
Again, the goal for the next hour and 15 minutes is to get this into Marmoset relatively quickly. The nice thing about this also though is we can also use existing textures, so albedo textures, uh, which I will definitely be using. It's just such a nice way to know kind of uh, how it's going to look. It's also so fast. I mean, for somebody who joined earlier, was like, oh, you did that in 30 minutes. Well, we're 45 minutes in. We have a tech, we have a head with very high res textures on it. And I'm already starting to feel like I could probably you know, push into uh, turn off symmetry here. set in a second we'll probably just start tossing this in there the little part of the ear there's causing me some troubles I guess I have with layers is it does make the um, experience a little more laggy so every time I'm kind of doing some of these masks and trying to rotate it is uh, I don't know, it's not the stream in case you're wondering it is actually lagging on the machine and that may be because of the massive alpha I had on that brush that I just looked at that probably is what it was yeah it was never mind that was not a layer problem, that was me having a 16k alpha accidentally assigned to a move brush. Is it similar to storing a morph target? It is similar to storing a morph target, yeah. Um, the difference is that you can have a ton of them. So whereas morphs work more as a camera A, camera B that you switch between, uh, layers can be camera A through camera Z, um, and they don't work globally, meaning it's not like this or this. It's uh, this and a difference of where the next one would be. Meaning right now, for example, on a morph target, if I were to turn on any of the other things that I've sculpted, uh, it would push maybe like, for example, it pushed the head all the way back to where the previous one would be. This one isn't going to do that. It's just going to sort of uh, very subtly add the additional textures. bit of weathering under the eyes not a crazy amount there's not there's not a lot there to begin with so you can, you can see how how finely detailed this displacement map is but I can kind of come in here and start picking out some of these I don't know if you can even see it on the stream but it's gonna be pretty subtle going to just kind of enhance the line and 
symmetry right now? No, I am. I think it's the line of the eye. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second by getting other textures on. So we did all the displacement textures, but uh, 3D Scan Store has a ton of other heads, and we can bring in some texture textures and see how that looks. So we'll turn off our mask. Get this in here. Uh, let's bring in another one. So see, now I'm turning on another layer I'm trying to. I'm going to save before I do that. So go to layer, click this on. This is a much more intense layer of, I think it's an older gentleman. Like this one. And that's a lot of cool stuff. Right, cool. So now what we can do is we can come into the actual texture map itself. Now the texture map that I'm using right now is just a white texture map. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to import a texture. I'm going to use the uh, scan store heads uh, and we'll use the female textures. So you see what they're, they're having here, textures. We'll just use the JPEG. Uh, we'll use the head color to start with. And since it's the same uh, layout it should work now you'll notice it doesn't the ear or something is, is wrong uh, that's because we need to go to texture uh, it's going to clone the texture so it's up here flip it in V and then reapply it now that it's upside down and you'll see what we get which is basically I'll turn it to a, a more basic shader uh, but we get something with really high res detail on it and the cool thing is that all of these heads can have that information. So I'm fine with this as a starting point. Um, there's a little bit of weirdness going on here, so maybe we'll try. Uh, I think it was probably, let's see, let's go back to our layers. Malo 3 seems to be one I used, so let's try importing. So we'll just do it from the top this time. Texture, import, uh, HD heads, Malo 3. Textures, let's use JPEGs, Diffuse. I'm going to flip it once it comes in. I think this is it. Flip. And then we will apply it. So there we go. So a different texture. Ooh, ooh metal. I like the other one more. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this all. I'm pretty happy with this. I know that I'm using female 01 textures. I can also go into Photoshop and obviously adjust these textures, which I can do in a second. Um, I'm saving this. There's some issues that I would want to clean up. And I can either poly paint those out or I could adjust them in Photoshop or anything else you want to use. You want to use a 3D one, that's fine. I'm going to go into uh, the file here. They actually give us HD heads and a marmoset scene with each one. So I'm going to load it in. I'm also going to go down to my lowest, while well, that's loading, I'm going to go down to my lowest resolution here. I'm going to export this as an OBJ. Uh, yeah. Arching head, head, arm, test. Looks like it's missing a couple files, but I'll show you what it's giving me. This is Marmoset 4 as I'm pulling it over right now. It's a little waxy. 
but this is the default test and this is the same shader that they're using. Uh, we can also remove their eye components, their hair components, all this stuff. And so you'll kind of see this is more like with the base mesh that we started with. I'm going to import a mesh. I can go File, Import Mesh. You can also right-click Import Model. And so I'll go into my archetype, but Art Jam, Head, Mark Set Test. And it crashed. <laughs> Let's try again. It's uh, loading on my other screen. Oh, the ZBrush crashed too. Interesting. Or I closed ZBrush on accident. That could be what happened too. Let's try importing that model again. There we are. Now what can happen, this is an easy way to do it. Uh, I can turn off the head. You see I have some other elements here. It seems like it has taken the model that I had. Audio keeps getting very quiet. I think you know, I had auto gain control on. Let me turn that off. Turn that off for you. That should be a little better. Uh, let me know if it changes at all. Um, all right, so that means that the model was exporting the groups. I do not want the model to export the groups. So we're gonna go back into our art jam head. This is why we saved right before we closed it. Or well, before we started doing this whole thing. Uh, ZBrush is now opening. Cool. Great job, ZBrush. Yes, it sure did. Thank you. Hide that. Document, new document. Change the rate to here. Get off this terrible wet rack shader. And voila, we're back. Now let's uh, go down to the lowest. Turn the texture map off. That's because I can see these again. And our export, let's actually do a visible, uh, sorry, a Z plugin. Let's do it as a FBX. FBX selected, smoothing the normals, export. This is going to the same place. We'll call it elf head uh, marm test. Great. It's uh, on the top left. You'll, I can't see which way I'm pointing. On the top left, you'll see it's doing its export thing. It'll let us know when it's done. One Alex F1 from Twitch. Hello, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, file is exported. We can turn that off. We're going to come back in here. We're going to delete this test, import a new model, and we'll do the test. There we go. Now you'll see it's one mesh. Now there's a couple things we can do. Um, first off, the eyes are incorrect. So I do want to get the eyes in there. So if we turn this one off and this one on, you'll notice that there's some white eyeballs on this. That is because if we open up the eyeballs, they have a sclera left and right. These are basically clear shaders, which seem to be having an issue with the way they were set up. But we could probably come in here and, and diagnose that. Basically, they have a piece of of clearness, if I put it myself, they have like a piece of clear that goes on top of the eyeball uh, to give it an extra reflection so that you're not doing just the color texture and the, um, the albedo texture and the translucency on the same net. So I don't want necessarily the hair components, I'm gonna remove all that. Uh, we could try to play around with them, but I don't know how. We could try to export them. What are these? Can I export this? probably could pull these around if I really wanted to, but we'll pass for now. Uh, what I'm saying is we could take this stuff and fix it. I want to get these eyes in, in a different spot though. Uh, so I do want to probably get those out. Let's get, uh, we'll remove the hair, we'll remove the mouth components, which is probably going to be teeth. I'm imagining, yep, some nice little chompers there. Put that head back, remove the mouth, collapse this, remove the sclera, sclera, the tear duct, also will have their own transitions. So you see what those kind of are. And this is more or less the base mesh that we got without all this extra stuff. Ah, you weren't seeing. I was removing all this stuff, sorry about that. I was removing the tear duct, the tear duct transition, which is this little piece here. 
This is all stuff that comes in the file. This is not stuff I made. I mean this, this, and then these sclera dividers and the hair. So we're going to take all that off. We're just going to have the eyeballs. I'm probably just going to try to move the eyeballs into position. I may uh, fail miserable, miserably. So we'll see how it goes. But the cool thing I can do is turn off this, turn off this, turn on this. There's the thing we were looking at. Right, this is the, the head sculpt that I use based on their base mesh. I can go into their library. I can go to the materials, uh, which are already here. This is the materials in Marmoset, and I can just drag and drop this on the fig. You know, if I show the eyes, it will probably look like uh, <laughs> like who framed Roger Rabbit. Um, but what I can do, oh, that's great. Uh, transform uh, position. Oh, that's that's a lot. We just moved it a lot. <laughs> we'll move it back into the city. <laughs> oh, I love 3D so much. It's so terrifying sometimes. We'll just get these. These are not the eyeballs I put in there, but uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll make these work. And I probably want the scale to be a little bigger, so we'll say like scale 1.05. Uh, let's say like one, let's just say like make it really big, 1.2. How big is this head? Oh, that's terrifying. It's it made it oblong. Astigmatism, it's real. Uh, copy, paste, paste, paste. And we'll bring it down. <laughs> no, it wasn't a, it was like total recall. Definitely a total recall moment with those things. Now I can grab them both and move them down. Probably move them back. Bring them up a little bit. Until we get kind of a look that we're looking for. Uh, getting a little bit of this crunch in here. With this uh, stuff. So I can come into here. It looks like the... Uh, <laughs> the is it the clear coat? Yeah, the intensity is just a little high. Now, really all I've done is I've used their base mesh. Uh, and just put a new texture on it. There's nothing crazy fancy here. And I just took their eyes and put them in my model. So I don't think there's really uh, a lot to talk about here, aside from the fact that I'm just using something that somebody else already had. Obviously, if I wanted to, I could put their teeth in there. That's something that we can kind of play around with. If I wanted to, we could try to get some new textures out. So let's try that. Because uh, I'm not getting some of the stuff that I really wanted here, right? Because what I'm really doing is I'm using the exact same textures in every possible way from the previous one. And I'm not getting the wrinkles and stuff that I want. So let's see how we can change this. Uh, here's the maps that it's already got. It's got a detail and a weight map. It does not have a displacement map. Notice that. We could probably create a new displacement map. Pretty easily, actually. Probably a height map. We could also call in the displacement map. That's already being used. Which was Malo 3. So I could go Malo 3. Placement. Uh huh. That's gonna slowly destroy it. It's also using 
the lowest possible thing, so it's not tessellating, which is a problem. So I'm actually going to delete that. But I do want to show you one other thing you could do. Minimize this. This is actually 3 million polygons. So why don't we just export this? I don't want it at that as an OBGA. I'm going to do Z plugin, FBX, visible, export, elf head, hi. It's going to do its thing. It's going to take a little while. Hopefully it doesn't crash on us like it did last time. Uh, but because uh, Marmoset, as it exports, Marmoset is actually uh, has baking and all kinds of other things set into it. That high res mesh still has the same um, details, the same UVs that the other one does. So let's see. It says it's writing its data. As soon as that is done, we will make that. Thing. In the meantime, let's set up some lighting. So let's use our classic or default. Default is fine. Uh, and by default, it looks like it has a skylight and a rim light that's not really doing anything. Let's go to our sky. Let's turn our brightness way down. Way down. We're going to come in here, right click, add a light. Let's add a Spotlight. Oh, we got to get some ray tracing in here too, don't we? I just realized we're not using ray tracing. So let's uh, go to our scene our render use ray tracing. And that's the rim. So now you see it's kind of fuzzing in and out as we move. Uh, we're going to come in here, we're going to make a bigger spot angle, a little less bright, move it closer to our object, use the wrong button. You know what, why don't we just go like up, do some like overhead moody lighting. Let me just turn that sky off. Great. So we're going to replace this. We're just going to save this as a new scene in my folder. Just going to hide that. <laughs> Import a model. and we're gonna import this three million polygon head. When we apply the new shader to it, or the existing shader to it, it might have a couple uh, issues with this because it's already gonna have a normal map on it and some of that stuff that it was doing. So we'll have to see if it goes a little crunchy or if it looks good at all. It might not look good, but we'll see. There we go. But now you can see without any detail on it, without any texture on it, that detail is coming through. Also, uh, this is ray tracing. It's obviously using a single light, but this is a 3 million polygon mesh, and it has no issues doing that. Drag and drop.
Maybe need another light in front or something. Let's delete that. Let's delete our. I kind of wish we could use a card. I think there was a in the sky. I can use another image, and what they like to use, which I thought was pretty interesting. their empty room HDRI. So they just use like this. I would say in here we probably want to dial the, like if we turn the normal map off, we might not need it. I don't know if it's really doing anything. But it is working. Now, like I was saying before, some of the other components, like these things, uh, I believe, like if we go to the Sclera one, it's probably just has an issue with the type of shader that it is. So maybe we'll just need to change that. Meaning we could probably clear coat, specular, specular map. Why is it not clear? missing like a transparency here, or the ability for transparency. Just playing around with some of the settings to see if I can get this to go away, because we could move it back into where the other one is based on the same uh, movements. It shouldn't be all that hard to do. Transparency. See, it's not on. It probably needs to be on dither or cut out. Just think about it. And is it still shining? Is the question. Take the sclera, which can probably have both of them on now. Yep, so you see how they're kind of different. Uh, I'm just going to use the exact same settings that I did on the eyeball. So the eyeball right has this movement. So what I'll do is I'll just take a quick screenshot of this, putting it on my over other monitor. You won't be able to see it because I'm going to be clicking and it's going to put it in the background. But that means sclera right needs to have the same position, which was point uh, negative 0 0.004. Let's see if this works. Negative 0 0.013, negative 0 0.014. Mm, this is a 0 0.05, 5, 5. There we go. So let's do the same thing on the left. So I pull left, new, just gonna do the exact same thing. It's probably just the inverse of what we're doing, but it's it's not hard to do. So we'll do the square on left. And we'll do the positioning. So point zero four. Sorry, you're gonna hear me whispering into my microphone. go. 
Let's try that with the tear duct one. That one might not work because it's a totally different sculpt, but we'll try that. Let's try this one though, which I believe we just said it needed to have the metalness turned up is what I think it was. Oh, we're in the wrong shader. Tear duct tear, probably that one. Yeah, so we'll turn this one way up. Transparency, maybe dither. And we'll find the next one next. Not super metally. Kind of want to just like copy material settings, paste material settings. Now this one, I'm almost positive this will not work just because it needs to be adjusted. What I could probably do is come in here, select this and say file, export, model file. I don't know what this is going to do. I'll try it though. I've never done this. Uh, head model file. I don't know what this does, but we'll try. What I'm hoping is I can import it back in here, take the existing meshes that it has, effectively taking the base meshes of the other parts of the model that I wasn't able to get, grab them, put them on this, and then in ZBrush, then manipulate them to, to meet my new base mesh. And hopefully, crossing my fingers, that will make it so that I can get all of the elements of the base mesh that I want. All right, so we're gonna hide this uh, tear duct right now, but at least we got a head in the shape that we want it to have. Looking pretty good. What we could also do, I'm actually gonna import this model and see if it works. So let's um, just come over here, choose something like this, and do a Z plugin, import the FBX that it said it had. There's nothing in here. Okay. Head model file, looks like it's a import it let's see what this is it's two gigs so it's huge oh oh Now I have the actual eyeballs in the right spot with this as its own sub-tool. Let's do one more test, everybody. Let's get these other components in there. I'm going to hide the big head, though. I don't need that head. I want this stuff. Head. That's what I want. Let's see if it works. Oh, that was fast. Let's see what this does. I need to get to low fi This is just too much right now. Everyone, look at this. Look at this beautiful base mesh that we're stealing. Taking. We're using i don't know what the right word is but look at this now we have some hair we have some eyelashes so what i'm gonna do the real easy we've got this already right i have these eyeballs these eyeballs don't matter anymore so i'm actually just going to delete them i have this head which now is its own thing so instead of bringing everything into this file i'm going to go the other way and i'm going to append i'm actually going to insert it at the very top 
this head here. Utilizing. Thank you, Nuclear Divide. Utilizing. I like that word a lot more. All right, we're going to hide the brows, the lashes, the tongue, and the teeth. We're going to hide that. We're going to... point for you indeed <laughs> all right we're just gonna move it it doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to get on the inside of the eyes it's basically a clear transition that's there to um, you know create a specular reflection at the corner of the eyeball that makes it feel like the eyeball is sitting in the socket and that there is wetness Sometimes it's just called an eye wetness uh, in that area. That's really all it's doing. So all I gotta do is just push this around until it's kind of like this. Might be easier if this didn't have a thing on it. Now, if you're working in production you're, or you're somebody out there is probably saying, Josh, you're cheating, right? But if I'm working in production and I just need to make a character that's going to be in the background or even a hero character, and you've already got all this stuff, already got all this stuff ready, what's the harm? You don't have to make it from scratch every time. So our eye wetness is now in the right spot, at least on that side. Probably need to go on the other side because this head is not symmetrical. So I need to go in here and just get this lined up. Spend a couple minutes on it. Looks like the eyeball is maybe a little too close to the edge on this side. That's probably because I just used their existing eyeball. Which means, though, that I could manipulate their eyeball as well. I don't have to go with where it's at. So, I could say... I mean, it looks kind of good, though. I can just change the textures later. Right, we'll do that later. Alright, symmetry on this. Push this back. We're going to do this on the whole thing just to make it work. And then we're going to bring it back in. We're going to import all this stuff. And throw the original shaders back on it. teeth looking. They're, a little, they're fine. They just need to go down a little bit. Quick way to test. We have this as a polygroup. We're going to go down some subdivision levels. I do have that layer on. So I'm going to go turn this layer on. Something is going on with my layers. Save. You are doing what your architect character was doing in the scene. Yeah, exactly. Just take what you got. Adjust it. Right, I don't know why this is happening, so let's 
isolate this, turn it on, turn it on, turn it on, up to the top, turn it on. See, so there's something going on with the scale in this. I don't feel like I scaled the head though. But it clearly thinks I did. We're gonna undo, 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 undo. Make a new one. Make a new one. Okay. All I wanted to do was lift the lips up. Apparently it's a big deal. To check if the teeth were in the right spot. the teeth are way too close to the lips. We could probably rotate them. Because the jaw kind of has a angle to it. the tongue. Fine. Just adjust it. Not like you're really going to see it, but good to have. A little bit of, bit of work here, but I think it will be fine. These look like they might be fiber mesh or, or cards, but I don't know. They're too nicely made for fiber mesh, I think. Probably try to use the match brush, is that what it's called? That didn't do near <laughs> that didn't do near what I wanted. Let's not do that. exporter again once it's done uh, this time I'm gonna do all sub tools and uh, that's fine that's fine that's fine export and call this head all this is probably gonna take a little bit of time because it's got to go through all of these and they're all at the highest subdivision levels so we'll get this scene 
set up a little bit more while that's doing its thing. Let's get some lighting going on. We know that we need to what? Um, let's just get some interesting lighting. So let's turn off the sky again. I don't actually like this light that I put in here. I'm going to delete that. I don't mind the rim, but we'll make uh, a light. We'll add a directional. For some reason, it's really far over there. Directional lights don't matter where they are, but it's just one of those, like, you know. Try to get some Rembrandt going on. Adding a very dark, using it, trying to use it as a fill. I don't know if there's a way to like, pilot it. Pilot the light. Lights? Light one. Aha! I could probably go into like some other workspace. I'd be able to see. This looks like. This could be my light. the right word on the bed. Temperature of the light is what I prefer. Let's make sure our ray tracing is on. stuff right now. I think this is going to look all right. And let's get our... Oh, I think I was just in a different camera. Yep. Let's undo that. anyways because the light is still export the model is still exporting
that's a little better. It's kind of hard to notice with all that stuff there, but let's see if this is done. It says it's writing data still. So as you can tell, maybe not the fastest process, but I think it's gonna work. I feel confident, I feel good. We're gonna save this. Not a lot we can really do here. Can turn off all these things that are distracting, all the hair stuff, the mouse stuff. This is this teardrop transition. This is probably more about what the actual things will look like. Oh, it's switching. It's switching to the eyebrows now. It's gone through a couple of them, I think. Oh boy. File exported. File exported, everybody. File import model. Hit all. Let's see how long this takes. I'm enjoying playing with this. There's obviously a lot that I could do in the texture and the model and you know things out how far I could push it. Um, but for you know an hour or two long test, uh, there's obviously a lot of potential in this. Because I think utilizing existing shaders and all that stuff, that's such a common thing now, you know, with uh, key shots and unreals and mega scans and all that stuff. It's not like, uh, I remember when I was going to school, you always had to learn how to make those shaders from scratch and what they all did from scratch. And uh, I think there's still like a validity to that, but it's not necessarily something where it's like you have to do that anymore. Or at least I don't think you have to do that anymore, just because um, you don't. Everybody else is already doing it. It's already available. It's not like you have to know how to set up a skin shader from scratch. Most programs will have one. Ooh, it's done. Okay, looks like it's not a million pieces. It's a good sign. We're going to turn off this, turn off this. Keep that light on. Oh, there's something going on there, though. Okay, so we're going to go through with these one by one. Turn off the eye components here. Actually, turn off that whole head. Okay. Okay. This is the head. Great, we got our head. Uh, let's get our eyes. That's a misclick. I think that's a sclera. Is that a sclera? See, that doesn't look right, does it? Is that an eye or is that a sclera? I'm gonna say those are wrong. This says it's a sclera, though. Something's wrong with those eyeballs. Okay. Well, there's the eyebrows. Uh, let's see. Did it delete them somehow? go into this one, hair components, eyebrows, I'm trying to see if it has the thing on it, yeah, but I don't see it. like something wrong. That's definitely the eyeball. So there's something going on with the export. I mean, I guess we could use the ones I used. 
that's fine. So I have this one. Select material. Eyelashes. Select material. Oh, you both have the eyelashes material. Okay. Well, let's turn off the this. This can stay. I didn't move the square. Huh? It's really just the hair. We'll come back here. This was the head. We're gonna get our eyebrows, eyelashes. we do we're doing the teeth something that's wrong Let's see there's something that's going on when it exported it the materials or whatever with the FBX did not like being exported so I could always come in here like I wonder like just Texture map create new from poly paint. It doesn't have the UVs anymore. So whatever it did when it left ZBrush, and whenever it left Marmoset, it lost that somehow. And I guess I can come in here and just move it. What do I think about Maxon owning Pixelogic? Uh, it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Probably like all of us. Oh, this is a question. The teardrop here. It's not necessarily looking the way I expected it to, so we'll just remove that. So it started to work. We got some, some good stuff out of that. Sorry about that, everybody. It looks like I had a little blip in the stream. Yeah, it seems to happen like once a stream for some reason. I don't know why all of a sudden it's just like, your internet's gone. Oh, it's back. Saving one more time. I think this has potential. Let me come in here. Let's get like, uh, what do we want in here? Let's turn back up that uh, specular. If you want to be super shiny, which I do not, but certain angles I'm sure it'll look better
We could also come in at this point, come in here. If we wanted to see what those other maps might look like, we could go into our albedo textures, go into our asset library, our scan store, our heads, and pick any of the other ones and say textures. We'll just use JPEGs for now. I like that one. Yeah, Paul's excited. I mean, you don't sell your company to be acquired to another company unless, you know, they either make you an incredible offer and you're super excited about it, or your company's going under. And as far as I know, ZBrush was doing great. So, you know, hard to say. But I don't, I'm, it's not like I feel like it was a, a sell out of than being worried. Let's see what if we do like one of the I like this one, but I'm just curious about some of the guy ones. This was the really wrinkled one, I think. Obviously, not using all of the correct textures, meaning it's not using the right normal map. Meaning, I would need to come in and say, like, face normal map and all that other stuff, so it's still using a much lighter normal map. So, if we change the normal map, it'll probably uh, feel like it fits the face texture a little bit more. Now you can see, like, the detail of that crevice feels a bit more natural. I don't necessarily want that, but. It is kind of cool to be able to do it that quickly. I liked MLO2, Textures, JPEG. We'll just use the face normal from that, and then we'll go back to the albedo. did want to just play around a little bit with the settings in this. I think we're pretty close to being done with this, though, at least as far as all, all that we're actually going to do. Uh, and maybe come in here and just open the spot angle up just a little bit brighter. And maybe just kind of pump up the brightness a little bit more. going on. <laughs> I 
can go into your uh, render settings here you can play with those so ray tracing you can obviously do all that fun stuff uh, but the camera uh, if you move the transform the control out of the way uh, you'll see there's some limits if you want to adjust it but your focus is here so if you want to adjust uh, a near blur and a far blur so example if I want to get that back of that face to be really blurred you can do that super easily the max of your bouquet size the type of your bouquet size I usually like using like a five or um, even a three makes it kind of stylized eventually it kind of falls into its a shape but you can get that in there you can also adjust some flare flare is not like flare from the office space but like uh, if there's a light in here you will see it there we go so it'll kind of do this it's a lot of flare we don't need that I'm gonna adjust that bar depth of field if you middle click it will set the depth of field you can also individually drag it but it is quite finicky Was snoring in the background yeah that makes sense that would totally make sense distortion uh, barrel and pincushing is not usually something you want but it is available and then if you want to adjust the chromatic aberration on any individual channel you can do that I usually just pump it up a little bit overall some post effects these are just how it is uh, rendering the actual image like almost the curve basically I tend to use um, hydral I guess is the right word I don't know if that's right but you can do them individually as well and then they have a bunch of presets most of which are not amazing but uh, they're more you know if you want to try to have a, a sort of a look a specific look to it specific type basically Instagram filters you want an Instagram filter on here you got it I love these types of filters this is what I seem, seem to do to all my images so somehow they have my favorite filter but I'll, I'll take it but yeah I mean I think you know pretty quickly we're able to get um, everything that we really wanted out of this so we took to kind of recap because we only have about five minutes left and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to the normal default render we took a sculpt a, a head mesh a basic uh, I'll just load the tool we took a Z tool that was provided to us by 3d scan store for free it's online it's on their site you can go check it out looks like this we took one that looked specifically this one we took that we sculpted on it for a while so it looks like this we imported that into marmoset and then at the end of marmoset we exported the stuff from the existing scene in marmoset that was given to us you see there is a scale shift there took the teeth the tongue the everything oh, 
took everything there, adjusted it very slightly, but just took the eyelashes, which are seemingly missing. The eyelashes, the covers for the eyes, the eyebrows, the teeth, and then re-imported it back into Marmoset, where we get this. So obviously quite a bit of work that we could do to this. We could spend forever making this better. Um, but for, you know, just under two hours of work, I'd say that I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Uh, feeling like I can take a base mesh, turn it into what I want it to be, and uh, I'll manipulate it later. Obviously I can recreate these shader settings in another software if I wanted to. Um, because it's just texture maps with shader settings, so I could find that somewhere else. Um, but generally, I feel pretty good about this being able to kind of, you know, make whatever we want. I'm going to take this guy and just I'm gonna turn down this light. I mean, off. I'm going to turn this up to get more of a beauty lighting as well. Pretty cool stuff pretty quickly. And again, that's all using the 3D scan store assets. Pretty happy with that. It's a little too bright, isn't it? I like that. I think this is good. Definitely going to be using this in future projects. Uh, I could see this as being a really great thing of, you know, maybe just making a bunch of heads or custom heads or something like that and, and using that in future projects. Uh, but I think that overall, this is a pretty cool tool uh, that you can use. And uh, you know, if you go online and, and buy these, they're not they're not crazy expensive. And the, um, the base mesh is free. So this gives you a really great base mesh, which as you can see, I could and you know, in about 30 minutes we went from this to this not pushing it not trying to do something crazy hard also not not um i think we finished our, our sculpt here in about 45 minutes so uh, definitely worth a, a pipeline and a workflow worth exploring because i think uh, it'll speed up a ton of stuff and it looks good and the end result is pretty realistic so pretty happy with that everybody all right all right y'all well with that i think we're actually at the end of our time so thank you everybody for joining me on the stream today. Uh, welcome, happy new year for everybody who's never seen a stream before. Welcome to our, our Noman streaming channel. We're going to be doing a ton of streaming this year. So like, follow, subscribe, whatever platform you're on, hit those notifications so you can see what we're doing. We have usually three streaming shows a week, uh, one on Tuesdays from eight to noon, or sorry, from 10 to noon Pacific, uh, one on Tuesday nights from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., one on Wednesdays, which is right now, from 4 to 6 p.m., uh, and then we do some events on Thursdays and some streams sometimes on Fridays. So, again, uh, like, follow, subscribe. If you're interested in what you're watching now, you'll probably like most of what you see there. And if you can't hang on for these, if, the, if you're just catching it now, uh, all of the videos will be on our YouTube and our Twitch channel, so you can watch them then as well. Cool? All right, everybody. Well, thank you very, very much. Uh, have a wonderful night. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.